the brutal and uncaught swamp-dwelling serial killer of Louisiana is definitely a messed up case. I've covered some truly messed up and demented cases from small towns. As I've said in the past, it seems these small towns live by their own set of rules. A couple of months back I covered the small vigilante town of Skidmore, where a whole town seemingly took justice into their own hands and murdered a man in plain sight. Between the years of 2005 and 2009, a series of brutal serial murders had the small town of Jefferson Davis Parish, Louisiana, terrified. In 2005, the first of eight bodies of local women surfaced in the swamp surrounding the Jennings area. Loretta Lewis was just 28 years old at the time her body was found floating in a river by a local fisherman on May 20th. Loretta was a mother of two children and had been missing for three days at the time of her discovery. Her body was too decomposed to determine a cause of death, but the coroner's toxicology report did show she was extremely intoxicated. Ernestine Patterson and Laconia Brown were two more victims of the Jeff Davis serial killer. Luckily, these two bodies weren't as decomposed which allowed officials to rule the cause of death due to a slit to the throat. For the other five women, Whitney Dubois, Crystal Zeno, Brittany Gary, Kristen Lopez, and Nicole Guillory, officials suspect asphyxia as their cause of death. Like many others I've covered in the past, this investigation was seemingly derailed at every turn with independent investigators drawing clear missteps and misconnections by the police. As I mentioned before, most of the victims were close, some lived together, and some were even related in some cases. Which is a huge misstep by the local police. Not drawing that conclusion essentially turned a promising trail and profile for a killer into a cold case for seemingly no reason. The victims all were drug users and all partied at the same drug house where the last victim, Nicole Guillory, was last seen leaving and hanging out at. Mental illness, drug abuse, and prostitution are all common factors between the girls as well. The most damning of all the connections though is that all of the girls were allegedly informants for the police about the local drug ring. They were all actively giving information about other victims in the Jess Davis 8. Mike Dubois, the brother of victim Whitney Dubois, believes he knows who the killer is, but cannot state who it is due to legal issues. The white male, as he is described from Jeff Parrish, who suspected of these killings, knew every one of the girls, admittedly. He also partied and did drugs with all of them. In 2007, this unknown alleged white male was arrested and charged with the murder of the third victim, Kristen Lopez but the charges were dropped when the key witnesses, for unknown reasons, recanted her testimony. Many think police made so many mistakes in the investigation that they flopped the case and that many locals won't trust the police as they think they have something to do with this. Rumors say law enforcement was involved in drugs and sex with the local drug ring and would like to keep this hush-hush. Many theories and rumors are floating around the small town of Jennings. It is probably unlikely that an entire police force was involved in covering up a serial killer, but it can never really be too sure, I guess. Now, let's talk about potential suspects that could fit this anonymous suspect. From what I can find in my research, four people have been arrested as the potential killer, two of which were charged with murder for multiple months before the charges were dropped due to botched evidence by the local enforcement. Frankie Richard, a local strip club owner and alleged drug kingpin, did admit he did have a crack addiction. He also admitted to having a sex addiction as well, which oddly enough, Frankie Richard has had sex with most of the victims. Frankie was also the last person to be seen with Kristen Lopez. Even with some truly damning evidence that Frankie knows at the very least something about Kristen Lopez's death. Locals once again allegedly claim officials got rid of the evidence at the request of Frankie Richard. Byron Jones and Lawrence Nixon 
who happened to be a cousin of the fifth victim, Lacania Brown, were both briefly charged with the murder of Ernestine Patterson. As the running theme in this case, though, the sheriff's office apparently failed to test the crime scene until 15 months after Patterson's murder. This is the clearest sign yet of possible intended obstruction by the police. Nearly 10 years later, and this case is still no closer to being solved. What is truly happening in the Jennings, Louisiana area? Is there a serial killer the local officials are protecting? Is there a rogue police force trying to hide something? Or are there simply just multiple killers out there? The killer is clearly a local and a regular of the drug scene. With so many rumors and so little fact, it's cases like this that truly bother me to the core. Justice should have been served to these women and their families. With an entire community pointing fingers at each other, we may never know who or what is responsible for these gruesome and tragic murders of a woman in the Jefferson Davis Parish area. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. No matter what your opinions are on this case, please be sure to send any information you may have to the Jefferson Davis Parish Police Department. At the end of the day, the police are working hard for us to solve this case, and we have to believe in that. An $85,000 reward has been offered to anyone who can lead investigators to the killer's capture. Please comment down below, letting me know your thoughts on this case and who you think the killer could be. If you enjoyed this case, be sure to hit that like button and share this video on your social media. The more likes and shares this video gets, the more YouTube promotes it to fresh new eyes. The more attention we can bring to these cases, the better. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day on all things natural and supernatural. If you have a case that you would like to suggest and see covered in a future Unsolved Mysteries video, be sure to send it in to swampdweller.net or the email that you can find in the description down below. I would love to see what you have to suggest. I'll see you guys soon.